Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. I am Mosquito Steve. Uh, We have a cram-packed show today, so I'm going to get through this really quick. I have some awesome guests today. I've got Heidi Smith and Gary Kaufman from the Chapter House Recovery. So it's going to be a very heavy mental health um, show. Not heavy because we're going to have fun today, but... Uh, but we're going to talk a lot about mental health today, so I want to welcome you guys. And, Hi, uh, thank you. Yeah, y'all are welcome to chime in if you have any questions about this mosquito stuff. You just stop me, and uh, and we'll talk. So first segment, all mosquitoes, and then we'll go into some mental health uh, stuff as we uh, do the last three segments. And the last segment, we'll take calls, so I'll give you all the phone number here in a little bit. Um, so here, let's get to the mosquito news this week. This This, this week? Oh, this week. Well, we're starting off way, aren't we? So, um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. If you if you can't tell, I'm from England. That's what this accent is. I'm British. Um, so, okay. So let's do real quick uh, because the the thing that I've been preaching to you guys is here in Texas. We need to be more concerned about West Nile virus than Zika. I know we're, Zika's getting all the news coverage these days, but it's West Nile virus here in Texas that we need to worry about. So I want to throw some numbers out at you. There are 406 total cases of West Nile virus in the United States so far this year. Out of those, 95 of those are in Texas. Wow. Yeah, that's a quarter. We got 25% of the West Nile cases are in Texas. Here's an interesting stat. South Dakota has 75. Little of South Dakota. I didn't know there was eighty people in South Dakota, and so but the mosquitoes uh, are bigger. Up but there. here, but here's the really here's the um, uh, there's and actually theirs is mostly sixty six of theirs is non neuroinvasive. Thirty five of the ninety five in Texas are the neuroinvasive kind. So uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh my God, no, sixty of the ninety five. Wow. And Texas are neuroinvasive. So that is the more serious kind. That's when if somebody dies from uh, uh, West Nile virus, it's it's more than likely the neuroinvasive kind that they had. So that's why you need to protect yourself here, people. That uh, These are local mosquito cases. This is not somebody traveling like with Zika and bringing it over here. These are mosquitoes born in Texas that are passing around the West Nile virus. So please protect yourself. Wear repellent. I strongly suggest that you wear a repellent like Mosquito Steve because we're all natural and we're more effective than DEET and Picardin. So uh, if you can't find my product and you've got Picardin available, please use Picardin, but use it in a spray, not a lotion. Lotions are about half as effective as spray-ons. And uh, the reason is is because the way that on-skin repellents work is the stuff evaporates off of you. If it's in a cream, it doesn't evaporate off. And so um, so it works better to do a spray-on. So um, I strongly recommend uh, using Picardin before you use DEET. Um, it's a little less uh, chemical and um, a little more effective than DEET in all of my studies. So... Okay, now here we go with Zika. Okay, the Zika virus, here's cases in Dallas. We have 33 cases of Zika virus in Dallas. How many of those, do y'all know how many of those came from mosquitoes? Zero. Yes, that's exactly right. Good. I don't have a prize for you. I'm sorry. I didn't know you'd answer. So, uh, yes, zero came from mosquitoes. They all come from people traveling. See, it seems to me the best solution to get rid of Zika is why don't you people quit going to Brazil and to Puerto Rico and places like that? Wait, but are they getting it from mosquitoes in Brazil and Puerto Rico? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's rampant down there. And so either that or they're having sex with somebody that got it from... So it can be transmitted from person to person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Zika virus. Now, West Nile virus can't, but Zika virus can. In fact, males, actually, they've, they've shown Zika virus in males for up to six months. So, but for women, they they recommend that if you do travel overseas, um, especially in the areas um, in the South America and the Caribbean where the Zika virus is, if you travel over there, don't have sex, unprotected sex, for two months when you get back. And so, um, so especially if you're trying to get pregnant, wait eight weeks before you get pregnant. That's the CDC's recommendation. So, uh, so I just think it's crazy though that we're 
we're um, so there's a story, and this is what I wanted to get to. Somebody posted this. A friend of mine, Linda, posted this on uh, Facebook this morning about um, they're spraying for. First of all, the CDC has come out and said they admit that the solutions aren't working very well. They're spraying this stuff called Nalid, permethrins, and pyrethroids. None of them are working very well, and uh, the, they, they are saying the mosquitoes have become resistant to it. Well, that yes, they are. They've actually been becoming resistant to them for, for years. Mosquitoes adapt really, really quickly. This is why when people talk about the genetically modified mosquito, I believe that what we'll end up doing is breeding a super mosquito because they adapt really, really quickly. So they, they are becoming resistant to the pesticides. Yet, the bees are not becoming resistant to the pesticides. This is the problem. So when you go spray a bunch of places with this stuff, you know this, you are killing pollinators. Pollinators are responsible for three quarters of the food supply in the world. Three quarters. That's a lot of food. Without three quarters of the food, you got to figure there's going to be a few people that are going to die. Okay, so bees alone are one-third of the food supply. Without, one th without bees, we would be losing one-third of our food supply in this world. So in South Carolina, uh, they had a couple of uh, mosquitoes show up with Zika virus, so they went out spraying Nalid. Uh, beekeeper Juanita Stanley woke up stunned. This is uh, from, uh, well, it's from a uh, Yahoo website, actually, uh, from AFP News. Juanita Stanley woke up stunned Monday morning when she realized the familiar buzz at her South Carolina apiary has gone silent in an effort to control the spread of mosquito-borne Zika virus. Authorities over the weekend doused parts of the southeastern state with the controversial pesticide Nalid, a dose that proved fatal to millions of bees. Our family business has been destroyed by the aerial spray. Um, help us share the story. Don't let our honey girls die in vain. Along with her plea, Stanley posted photos showing the clumps of dead bees and, her t and uh, the team burning the boxes that had housed the hives. According to local channels, the WCSC, the apiary lost 46 hives and 2.5 million bees. So here's the interesting thing. Is there's, a, there's a guy here locally that sprays for mosquitoes. And he's got this whole page dedicated to bees. And he says, hey, look, we love bees, but we love your family more. And there's really no evidence to show that this product actually has anything to do with harming bees or collapsing them. Um, well, how about the evidence is right on the label? Because it tells you on the label that it kills bees. And yet, that's what we're doing is we go out there and spray. There's no evidence other than the company that makes this stuff tells you that it kills bees. So well, the, kill, the, the word killing... I mean, your product. It depends is on what kill, kill, kill means, right? Okay, <laughs> so it's interpretive. All right. it's, it is. <laughs> so it depends but, on what yeah, is is the repel. The repel word is what yes. we have with your. Well, and that's but the thing is, see the the big the municipalities and the big chemical companies don't believe in repelling. They just don't believe it. They they don't understand the concept and. That's the problem is it's, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change people's minds. And then you know, you all know, that is a really hard thing to do. And so usually you have to go through something tragic. I know for me, you know, I, it's before I got into recovery, um, I had to go through a tragedy before my mind would open up to doing something different. And, f and in spite of the fact that I failed miserably in every area of my life, I kept thinking I had the answers. And I had to get to a point where I had finally realized my, my position and how bad it was. You know, I'd been homeless. I was unemployable. Um, you know, I'd gone to jail many, many times. And yet I kept doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. It was absolutely insane. And that's why I always, that's why I try to tell people this is how this relates to me. You know, I was literally insane 21 years ago. And um, and thanks to being in recovery and having people that had gone before me that had recovered um, and had some experience, they helped bring me back to reality. And I literally didn't know the difference between the truth and, and, uh, and false. I really didn't. And so thank God um, there were people that had been before me that could help me out and show me the way. And I was able to recover. And, and it's and it wasn't early. I mean, it took a few years for my my mental 
my mental brain was working very well. Um, and some days it still doesn't. Um, uh, but anyways, it, it took a while, but, but I, everything I owe that I have today, I owe to this. Now, a lot of people would say, great, you're old, fat, and poor. You've done well, Steve. But, <laughs> uh, but I do believe there's something to this mosquito thing. That's why I've stuck with it for so long and I'm going to continue to stick with it. But, um, but you know what, the, the spirit to get up in the morning after, you know, I mean, it's really hard some days to go work on something that you've worked on for so long and there's really not, it's not producing income for me or anything. And so uh, some days it's tough, but um, but I'm passionate about it and I believe in it. And, and I know I've got a product that's better than anybody else out there. So um, so I'll stick with it. But that is because of the I've been introduced to, to God through this program, through recovery programs. And so it's my faith in God and what this has done for me to bring me back to some mental health. Uh, that keeps me going. And so uh, so this is definitely tied into mental health, just like it's tied into good business practices. You know, I got to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and I need to be able to do that. And I need to sleep at night. And uh, the only way I can do that is if I'm honest and truthful and, and try to help people every single day. So, all right, so this is what... So I have all this other information I was going to talk about, and I didn't even get there. And I was talking fast today, too, and I just missed out on a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, But it's okay. So uh, the deal is, is when we come back, we're going to talk about mental health. I've got Heidi here. Gary's here. We're going to talk about Chapter House. We're going to talk about all kinds of mental health issues. I'm really excited. These are awesome guests. So please tune back in uh, here and uh, we'll be back after these words. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. I just, I'm sorry. I just can't, I can't come in and hear it. I know, I just love it. I love it. Yeah, I've never seen Elton John. I got to go see him one of these days. Four times, Caesars. Oh, I hate you. Four times. The Red Piano Show. Why? Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. See, you should call me up and say, hey, Steve, I'm taking you to the Elton John show. It was 10 years ago. Well, he's still out there. You mean out? Well, yeah, yeah. (laughs) He's really out there now. So, all right. So, welcome back to the Mosquito Steve show. We've got Heidi Smith. And Gary Kaufman from really Heidi's here. Heidi's our guest. <laughs> Gary's kind of just our pain in the rear here. The our usual. third wheel. Our third wheel. He is. Yeah. Um, but they're from Chapter House. So welcome, Heidi. Thanks Thank for you. being Thanks on the for show. Thanks for having me. Um, so maybe sometime off there we can talk about Gary. Absolutely. Because uh, there's a lot of there's stuff. There's a lot to I'm talk sure about. I'm sure y'all have learned a lot about oh, yeah. him in the last few More than I ever needed weeks. to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, before I get into my questions, you and your husband, y'all started Chapter House. Um, so tell me a little bit. First of all, who's your husband? How did all this start? What's sure. your background? So, uh, yeah, my name's Heidi Smith, and my husband is Michael Smith. And Oh, yeah. What a coincidence. Exactly. That is so weird. Exactly. I had a very complex maiden name, so I was very <laughs> excited to get the Smith. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, uh, we've been married eight years, and uh, we both met. We were already working in the recovery field. Uh, my husband's been in, uh, sober from a heroin addiction for 13 years. Wow. And uh, he got sober as a young adult, um, around 23, I believe. And uh, I'm a counselor. I have a master's degree. I'm a licensed professional counselor here in Texas. And uh, we met working at a treatment center. I was a, a, a clinician, and he was doing marketing. And, okay, uh, I thought you were going to say he was a patient. I know, I like, it's his favorite unethical? joke. Yeah. He's always like, yeah, we met, I was a patient. I'm like, no, I promise. <laughs> um, so we knew as soon as we started dating that God had a plan for us. Uh, he has such a business and marketing mind and such a passion for recovery. And I'm I'm really passionate about the clinical side of working with drug addicts and alcoholics and uh, and combining that with the 12 steps. We just knew that God had a plan. Um, and it, it took us a while, and we kept working at, uh, at various companies. And a couple of years ago, we finally decided to take the leap and start our own program, which is a extended care program for young adult men. So okay. it's uh, so it where did your passion our, come from, though? Why did you want to get into? So I've had I've had quite a few family members that were drug addicts and alcoholics, okay. and um, you know it was it was an interesting way that God kind of caught me. You know the first. The first job I got out of graduate school was at a treatment center working with uh, pregnant and parenting women and children. Wow. And I worked there for four years, and it ignited an understanding for me uh, that the only way to recover from the disease of alcoholism and addiction was through the 12 steps. And I, uh, I didn't see any success in any other way. 
So at that point, I went through the 12 steps myself, um, even though I'm not a drug addict or an alcoholic. And yeah. um, it, it was, an, it was a, a life-changing experience. And after that, I wanted to only work for treatment centers that were, uh, that were really, really focused on 12-step recovery. So, Absolutely. Yeah, because I, there's uh, you, what happens generally in treatment, we see it all the time, and, and uh, in the rooms, the recovery rooms, some guy gets out of treatment, he comes in there, you tell he doesn't want to be in a meeting, sitting in there, and, and if people don't, you know, if the right people don't get to him, and sometimes just on his own, you know, own efforts, he doesn't come back, you know? Yeah. And and people don't understand. There's there's nothing. This is not the shick shade old thing that has not really ever worked very well. Um, so uh, their recovery rates are very minimal. And that's where you know you go to check in for a couple of weekends, and yeah. then uh, you know, and then you're done. You don't ever have to worry about it again. Um, even the things like Celebrate Recovery and some of those other programs, you know, they are modeled around the steps. Yeah. And um, and so, t- tell me why why is it? What do the steps do? that that make that difference for people well so i mean what we know is that it, you know for anybody that knows someone who's in long-term recovery from addiction if you knew them before when they were still drinking or using drugs and you know them now they're they're usually unrecognizable like they're not even the same person yeah you know when when people know my husband 13 years into recovery it's like what i mean that's not even the same man he doesn't think the same he doesn't react to life the same he doesn't do relationships the same nothing's the same he had an entire psychic change everything changed from the inside out and that's what it takes you can't just it's not just uh, you know a little bit of therapy and you know a few good meals at a treatment center and all of a sudden you're <laughs> just going to have this entire shift in the way you think and believe and react and, and what the 12 steps is, is a, basically a way to manufacture that experience. It, it's a way of taking yourself on and taking yourself on in the context of a relationship with a higher power that, that opens up the possibility to alter and have, a, you know, an entire shift in um, your ideas, emotions, and attitudes in life. I, I can think of somebody right now that could use the 12 steps. And I'm <laughs> and looking at him. sitting right That's here. right. <laughs> That's uh, Gary. You know, you I'm might not benefit from talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, I will tell you. I've actually uh, i've I've worked steps many times. I'm not one of those that's you know. Oh, I worked them back in 1974. I don't need to do them again. I worked steps often because um, more is revealed. I guess uh, you know. I spent so many years in blackout drinking. Um, there's so much in my life I don't remember. I don't even, the eighties, I'm not kidding. The whole decade of the eighties is pretty much shot for me. I remember generalities. That's about it. And so, uh, so for me, it's very important because stuff will just pop into my head that I've forgotten about. Yeah. It's so weird. You still remember stuff to this day. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, this month will be 21 years. Don't forget that Gary, in case you need to make a note (laughs) of that. Uh, so, uh, uh, Gary's often reminded me because Gary's been sober 30, what, 39 years? Oh, no, no, that's 31 years. And uh, But he likes to remind me that, you know, the miracle doesn't really happen until you get to 30 years. Is that right? Exactly. No, it's, it's 20, 23 years. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I heard I heard the 32nd year was the roughest one for most people. It's, <laughs> so, it's interesting, it's, though, you know, as, as a, I, I almost call myself like the anti-counselor because, you know, as soon as I realized that the 12 steps was really what worked, I, I became unwilling to work with clients that were addicted um, if they weren't actively working the 12 steps. Yeah. Because I don't think therapy does shit if you're not if you're not getting into recovery um, in, in that arena. And so um, it, it's one of the things that makes makes me a little different kind of in the therapeutic context. Um, it's huge. It's huge. My, <clears throat> I had a Lois Jordan was my therapist mm-hmm. when I sobered up and, and she's one uh, of the best. And she is. And she absolutely, she said, you know what, Steve, you're working the steps. You're, you know, doing the things you're helping others. You're doing the things you're supposed to be doing. You know, unless you just really want to do this, I, I, you don't really need to be coming to see me. Yeah. And I thought that was so incredible. Yeah, talk and, therapy's only. I mean, talk therapy's great in a lot yeah. of other contexts, but it doesn't really do all that much for drug addicts and alcoholics. No, um, no. If they're not doing doing some other stuff. And what happens is, the longer you stay sober, and the longer you know you stay involved, then you're able to work through those Absolutely. issues. It, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, so we'll, it's, we'll say though that there, are, all this is true, but but an inventory 
But in addition to this, I think it's great that we have therapists and people that are licensed like Heidi, because if you have a, a severe trauma right. that you're not going to be able to deal with in an inventory and in the process of working the 12 steps. No, it's, that it's first very 12 important. months is so critical. I mean, that's why, I mean, I do think, yeah, there's, you've got to have the help right up front. That's in some cases, I think if you have alcoholism and you work the 12 steps as it's laid out in our big book that, that you can, you can recover. But right. in addition, there's some people that have severe trauma oh, yeah. in their right, life right. That, that need extra Well, help. and especially, and I see that a lot more in females than I do in guys, but, and I might be You'd be, be wrong. surprised. Really? I, you know, the, the place that my husband and I run, Chapter House, is all men, and there's, there's a lot of trauma and a lot of shame issues, and, and all of that stuff is, has got to be dealt with. Um, you know, it just, I, the, I think the most effective way is to do it simultaneously with the steps. So I still have shame issues today. I really do. Yeah. I'm not kidding. And it, that's what baffles me the most about being sober 21 years is that I still have trouble looking in the mirror mm-hmm. some days. I have trouble. Uh, I have horrible self-image and, and oh, there's yeah. a lot of shame and stuff around that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I work with tons of, with, with all men, uh, tons of eating disorders, a, a significant amount of body shame issues, lots of sexual abuse. So that stuff is very, very real and men don't like it t- to talk about it as much, yeah. but um, hmm. it, it's there. I don't want to add to your shame, Steve, but if, if I, if, if this, if I have to talk to Heidi about the, how traumatic this show is for me, <laughs> is that going to affect the shame. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. It just never stops. It doesn't. It doesn't. So I was. Uh, I was actually yesterday. I. She's talking about the trauma. I have to say, I did not sleep the night before. In fact, I slept probably only nine hours the entire week. It was oh, wow. so bad. I've, I've got this illness that's come back four times this year. It's physical illness, and um, so I finally went and got a steroid shot on Thursday. And it kept me up all night Thursday night, and um, and and just I've been miserable. And uh, plus steroids, I get roid rage mm-hmm. real easy from steroid shots. And so, uh, and so Gary decided yesterday morning to call and pick on me. It was just it was horrible. Oh no, wait, Did I you called say you. Roid, roid or roid? Roid. It was roid rage. <laughs> roid rage. Roid, yeah. What is but that? But if you combine it on the road, it's roid road rage, and then it's really <laughs> bad. That's that you don't want. I actually just got a camera. I have to tell you, I just got a camera for because I see these these um, car crash videos and and these guys have these cameras on their dash. So I, you know, I want one of those. And I decided, you know what, I really need one for. I need to turn around because the I am a different person when I drive. I really am. I, I, you know, I can be lighthearted and stuff, but when I drive, I get, I can be a different guy <laughs> and I'm going to turn that thing on me so I can see how funny I look when I'm acting weird and waving my arms in the air and stuff at people. I, I'm going to do that. And then I will post them. See, this is what I like. I, oh, then I'll post it on Facebook and then I'm accountable. Yeah, we for, can all hold you accountable that's right, that's for right. your selfishness that's and self-centeredness. What I, that's the kind yeah. of guy I am. I like to be an open book. So so speaking of open book, we're fixing to open the uh, books to some advertisers, actually, that don't pay me any money. <laughs> so how about that? Just so you guys know, this is coming to an end one of these days soon. You're going to have to start paying for these spots. But anyways, we're going to take a break here when we come back more. We're going to actually, we're going to make this more Heidi centric. I think Gary kind of stole, ran off with I, the show. I, it's I, just, was, I, don't know. I kept quiet most of the time. <laughs> the one time though that you didn't, it didn't, I'm just kidding. So anyways, we'll be right back with Heidi and Gary. Thank you all for tuning in to the Mosquito Steve show. Uh, come back to us. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. It's a great song, so all we want is to have some peace of mind. It doesn't sound like a very peaceful song, but it really is. It was in the 70s. Hi, everybody. This is Mosquito Steve. I have some great guests here with me today, Gary Kaufman and, of course, Heidi Smith from the Chapter House. So, Tell us about what is Chapter House, what is it y'all do, what's your specialty, what makes you different from the other places? Sure. So Chapter House is an extended care for young adult men, and what that means is that uh, we get we get young adult men ages 18 to about 35, and most of them come to us after they've been to primary treatment for drug addiction or alcoholism. Oh. So they may go somewhere for 30 or 60 days, and then... Uh, the treatment team up there, their family combined, people believe they, they need more 
you know, they need more of a transition instead of just going back home. And so at that point, they would refer them to Chapter House. And Chapter House is more than just a sober living. So there's a a big continuum. You know, there's sober living houses that are very, very unstructured, self-governed, um, which is which is great. There's a huge need for that. And um, and then, you know, the continuum goes up to high structure sober living where there's quite a bit of structure, supervision, um, oversight. And that's what Chapter House is. Chapter House mm-hmm. is uh, a place where we provide um, a really, really safe transition for for young adults to come out of treatment because when that's the highest relapse rate. You can go to treatment. You can hold your breath. You can do really well for 30 or 60 days. You get out. You get your cell phone back. You get your car back. You get you right. know you get you get your girlfriend back, and you you know you're. I mean, a lot of times within within four hours of leaving the treatment center, guys have relapsed. I have still not got my girlfriend back. Yeah, <laughs> it's been 21 years. So we really try, and, and a part of it is that there's oftentimes a huge leap from. You've been in this residential treatment center where you're under 24-hour supervision. The doors are locked. You, you know, you're, and then you just get out and go to a sober living and kind of are free to do whatever you want. And that leap in care is sometimes too much. And so we provide a higher step up where the leap isn't such a big leap. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's more of an extension of treatment where they're able to uh, stay safe and, and ease back into life. So we do... We do a lot of life skills, a lot of career building, uh, education, help, getting these guys back into school, um, back into college. Why just guys? That's just, you know, I mean, gender-specific treatment is the best. So, I mean, there's there's some really good places already for women here okay. in the Metroplex. And uh, my, like, like? There's a place called Windhaven House. Okay. Um, so, if anyone wants to look, they're amazing. Uh, we work with them a lot, refer back and forth to them, and they okay. do really, really good sober living uh, for women. But, uh, you know, my husband's kind of the one who was really passionate about this and he got sober at 23 and he really wanted to, to work with young adult men and show them that there's hope. Cool. So, so do you guys, do y'all bring in the recovery community or do you take guys out both. to the, you do both? Yep. Okay. The, the, a guy that lives at chapter house is going to go to five, uh, 12 step local 12 step meetings a week and okay. then two nights a week a 12 step person is going to come in and share their story okay so is there any specific drug alcohol is there y'all have, doesn't matter if they're recovering from any substance yes any i mean we get <coughs> we get lots of opiate addicts heroin addicts alcoholics cocaine addicts okay marijuana we get a little bit of everything okay so i noticed uh, y'all had the was it the uh, the launch what is it? Your landing. living landing, launching, living. Yes, at, at the bottom of your website. So is that is that your that shows a whole approach? Yeah, that's it, kind of our stage system. You know, we we really the landing state. You know, so it's landing, launching, living because what happens a lot of times, and and eight out of ten guys do really well at what we call a traditional sober living house, which is more just your your traditional sober living, but. But you're assuming that those guys have some basic life skills to be able to pull that off. You tell a guy, hey, get a job in two weeks, you know, go to your AA meetings, find a sponsor, uh, you know, set up a checking account, get your meds refilled, get to your psychiatrist every week, take the bus. You know, you're assuming they can do that. Right. We work with a lot of guys that we're not assuming they know how to pull that all off. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> so, I mean, not, you know, and that's where, you know, unfortunately a lot of, a lot of kind of decompensation happens in that early recovery stage. So we slow down that process and uh, and that, that goal of the first stage is just to give them a safe place to land. Like leaving treatment can be traumatic. You know, you were in like a little group of people, you had a really neat community, you loved your therapist, you leave, you know, and you're just kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, now yeah. I'm doing this thing sober. And and our whole goal in that first stage is just to help them land, just settle in, just feel safe, um, keep up their recovery and, uh, and, and stay busy. You know, we don't want them laying around, you know, smoking cigarettes, playing video games all day. You know, we're, I mean, we're keeping them busy. They're going to the gym, they're doing... Uh, life skills curriculum. They're working in recovery. I mean, they're they're staying busy. They're volunteering, um, and then once they're really stable, then they go out and get a job or, okay. or get back into school. So we just slow the process down a little bit. So I, you know, I've worked with guys that have had two years sober, and they're active. They're working. They're 
going they're in the recovery community they're going to meetings and they're helping other guys they're doing all those things but evidently that lurking notion is still in there and it just blows my mind and after two years of having their life completely turn around and there's some peace and happiness and joy and then next thing you know they stop doing it for a couple of weeks and they're off yeah and off to the races and back heading down the, the bad road again yeah I, I just i don't is there any way is there any way to detect that and stop that I mean, because what do y'all do? What do you, you y'all don't work with guys that have two years, what, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and a lot of my clinical history is working with chronic relapsers. Okay. I worked at a okay. treatment center called Burning Tree Recovery Ranch for eight years before I started a chapter house with my husband. So I've got quite a bit of clinical experience, and, and they're the best with chronic relapsers. But so I've got quite a bit of experience working with that. And um, yeah, I mean, some people just have this thing really bad, you know, and. Um, it takes an extreme amount of commitment to recovery and commitment to spiritual growth to to keep sober. And if that selfishness and self will um, starts creeping back in, it can be really it can be really scary. And um, a lot of times, you discover that there was a, a, a quite a few areas of dishonesty in the lives of those that relapse. Wow! So yeah. you know, yeah. rigorous honesty is um, is very important. But you know, this is a disease like any other disease, and. Um, you know, just not everybody gets better. I had a boss that told me that a few years ago, you know, who just said, man, I mean, some people, I mean, you just, they don't, not everyone gets better. Yeah. I mean, if you stay sober long enough, I know Gary, you've lost, we talked about the other night, a couple of friends that that, uh, uh, just in the last year, it's been, it's been a rough year. I mean, it's, uh, I had three years ago, I had three former sponsors die within a two month period. And yeah. uh, it just, but uh, but now they all died from old age. <laughs> yeah. But but there's a lot of guys. We were talking about some young guys the other day that just they can't do it. They can't. Um, sometimes they can't follow instructions. Yes. Sometimes it's just that. Sometimes you know the the other parts of it, the depression and things like that, take over. Um, I've known people with 22 years that have killed themselves yeah. with that have been sober yeah. for a long time and. And uh, I mean, this is for me. That's why I continue to work steps. It make I, it just breaks my heart to see people stick around in recovery and not get all the wonders yeah. of recovery. Yeah, and you know there is a lot of co-occurring mental health issues in drug addicts and alcoholics, yep. and so even twenty-two years sober, you know there can there can still be quite a lot of severe issues. With Thirty-one, you yeah. can still be a control freak. Mm-hmm. I've seen that in guys. <laughs> it, it is weird. It is, isn't it? But um, it's a, but you know you're it's been, hurting me. <laughs> with as many years as I've been doing this, I you know the 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 more I do it, the less I know. You know, I mean, yeah. like most people say, they've been doing something long enough. I don't, I can't predict who's going to get sober or stay sober. I don't, I don't really have all the answers. The I'm more and more convinced that this is a God deal and less of a me deal. Yep. <laughs> And I can only influence someone so much. And that's what one of the things Chapter House wants to do is just create a space for people to have that experience with God and that experience with recovery and experience with the steps and know that as a human power, we can only do so much. I am so glad to hear you say the word God. That is so refreshing. It seems like we're everybody's afraid to use the word God these days, and and uh, I don't know what I do without him. And it's uh, it's well, which God are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. talking about not your God. That's for I, sure. So. I have a counselor who came to work from uh, from another treatment center who told me that she was not allowed to talk about God, oh God at a treatment imagine. center. Well, there's there's entire twelve step programs now around um, not God. It's just weird to me. The whole it says the twelve step says having had a spiritual awakening is the result of these steps. Well, so if you have had a spiritual awakening, there should be a, a higher power at least. But um, but uh, anyways, there's so before we go is cause we're running out of time here. We're going coming up on a break, so I want to do that a couple of things. First of all, how do people get a hold of you? Well, they can call our admissions department at eight 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 four four eight nine six nine six. Okay, we'll repeat that again next segment, so get a pen and pencil ready if you need it, but tell us again one one more time. You got it. Our admissions department is 888-448-9696. And the website? Is uh, chapterhouserecovery.com. Chapterhouserecovery.com. Okay, so um, by the way, you could be listening to this all over the country. If you have the iHeartRadio app, you just uh, tune in the iHeartRadio app and you look up Talk Radio 1190. And um, so you can listen to this anytime. All of my shows, my previous recorded shows, are on uh, YouTube 
and will uh, and eventually they make their way to iTunes, and so you can uh, listen to them on a podcast. So uh, if there's any information that you um, missed today and you want to get it, uh, probably by Tuesday we'll be up on YouTube, so you can come find this again. And uh, so when we come back, uh, we if you want to call about a mental health question or a treatment center question or an addiction question or something like that, then we would love to take your call. I don't want to do mosquito calls right now just because I've got these special guests here. So 214 or 817 787 1190. 214 817 214 or 817 787 1190. Is that as confusing as it sounds? Okay, 214-787-1190. Call us if you have a question for um, Heidi and Gary, and we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. How about I just sing? How about that? I just, I love my music. I really do. Thank you, Will. Anytime, man. Okay, so um, I'm back here with Heidi Smith and Gary Kaufman from the Chapter House Recovery. And so a couple of things. First of all, um, if you want to call in with a question about recovery, addiction, or anything like that, 214-787-1190 or 817-787-1190. Um, remember you can tune in to us on iHeartRadio anytime and catch, uh, the replays on YouTube. Okay. So, um, have to know, uh, so you, you also, y'all do, um, intensive outpatient. IOP. We do. So, you know, we have the guy, the sober houses, and then we also have, uh, an outpatient counseling center. You know, it's a licensed, uh, substance abuse counseling center for outpatient services in Richardson, And uh, we provide a full continuum of addiction services on an outpatient basis. So we do intensive outpatient treatment, which is 10 hours a week. Um, And we do supportive outpatient, which is less hours. We can do individual therapy. And we also have a psychiatrist on staff. So we uh, we kind of do the full the full gamut. And, uh, and and you don't have to be part of Chapter House Sober Living to participate in the outpatient. We take people from the general public. Okay, so I have to know if somebody calls at. 11 o'clock on a Saturday night or 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, if they call that 888 number, somebody's going to answer and talk to them and help up them? To and ten, them up to 10 p.m. So after 10 p.m., you know, we go to sleep. Okay. So if you call at 11, you'll get a call the next morning by 8 a.m. Okay. So so I've answered the phone for uh, for local recovery groups at 3 in the morning before. Yep. And, yeah, it's – there's nothing you can do for people that call usually at three in the, morning, the people usually. that are calling at three in the morning are under the influence yes yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it usually it it's uh it serves them better to call them back the next day yes, they can be brutal they yeah. really can but you stayed sober through that, that call that's you? right that's right i did it was thank, <laughs> thank you for reminding me of that gary all right so um i i have to know so i know that you guys what first of all what's the age limit the lo- youngest age guy you take uh 18 Okay, in any of the programs, IOP. We can or? we can take a seventeen year old sometimes, you know, depending if they're if they're a more mature seventeen year old. Okay, is there is there a regulatory reason why you don't take them younger than eighteen? It's or? just you have to get a specialty adolescent license. Okay, and um, and yeah, it gets a lot more complex, especially if you're treating adults simultaneously with adolescents. You have to keep them separated, and you know, there's okay. a lot of state regulations around that. And we've just chosen to, to we don't specialize in adolescents. We specialize in young adults. Okay. Well, so, I mean, have you found that the demand is great? I mean, do y'all have, do you have a waiting list or y'all, you know, what's. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've been, um, it, it's been amazing in the two years we've been open. Most of the, most of the months out of the two years we've been on a waiting list. Um, there wow. is a, there's a huge need for, um, you know, for help for, for this population of, of young adult men. So what's it going to take to expand? <laughs> well, part of our part of our model is being small, so you know we don't want to expand too much because we we really want to stay intimately involved with each young man. So, huh? And Gary, I hear is very intimately involved with each young man. He is. is <laughs> God, we're taking the wrong turn <laughs> Sorry, again. I, you, you did, we're going so good, and then you blame me. <laughs> and you blame me afterwards. No, I will. I will say one thing about Chapter House. What I would, what impressed me is, is it seems like every time I go there to give a tour or go to see one of the guys, whatever it is, I walk in and they're in group. It, there's, it, there's always, always things going on that are, um, you know, productive, uh, very needed uh, uh, activities that are going on all day. So it's, it, you're not going to see the guys laying around 
you know, reading guns and ammo and watching porn at three in the afternoon. Um, right? Steve? Yes. Right, right, what? Heidi? I'm... Okay. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. no, I mean, it's, it's, always, it's always so busy. And I thought, God, these guys are working consistently. But yeah. then, then they go and they break off and they go to MMA or they'll go down and feed the homeless. Or there's always activities. You guys, we went to the, uh, what is it, the Colorado conference recently? Oh, yeah. We took them to the Fellowship of the Spirit conference in Estes Park, Colorado. It was, uh, it was really wow. fun. Yeah. I, yeah, you we know took what? about 10 guys. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I went to a treatment center in 1992 called Summer Sky. It's still there. And, uh, but you know, it's, I, I hear about all these people that go to these places like California and, oh, we were out on the beach meditating and stuff like that or Hawaii. It's just crazy. And I go to this place and it's like an old nursing home right, with seven right. foot high ceilings. And, Where is that? Is that you know, Stevenville? Summer's guy in Stevenville. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And at the time I, I'm sure it's been remodeled since yeah. then. It's probably a lot nicer. You know, I had another, the same boss that, that I was talking about earlier, always talked about how addiction is not an amenities deficiency. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's not about true. it's not about being on the beach. It's not about having the the whirlpool and the massages. I mean, it's about it's about having that that psychic change, and that internal shift. So and that can happen in an old nursing home. Yeah, I guess if you yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it's about being ready, is what it was yeah. for me. You know, I was I just wasn't listening until I until I could listen. It wasn't going to work. So, okay, I have to know. There are organizations that claim that they're three times more effective than other treatment programs. So um, tell me why that's true or not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've, I've always heard some a couple other people say, you know, when they ask what, what's your success rate, they say one recovery per person if wanted. <laughs> and um, and that's that's, that's kind of what we go with. It's like we're not making claims to be the most effective. Uh, we're, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, we don't we don't do a lot of medication assisted Yay. recovery, meaning, um, you know, opiate replacement therapy or anything like that. I don't think there's a magic pill. You know, I'm not saying that stuff's bad or evil, but I don't think that anybody can claim to have a corner on the market of addiction. I think, you know, we, we're all soldiers in this deal together trying to point these guys on the right path and, and make recovery available to them. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, I know we're not claiming that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we try and keep ourselves um, right sized, you know, and know that, you know, that we can only do what we can do, but we can do what we do do well. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen I've seen people sober up in a couple of different ways from heroin, um, obviously with alcohol. Um, seems like crystal meth is the one that I don't see a lot of success when it comes to crystal meth. Is that do you guys take people mm -hmm. that okay and what is is there anything different you do with them or um uh no i mean you know in general people who have been addicted to crystal meth or cocaine you know both which are more uppers um are going to struggle maybe with some more mental health issues when they first get in you know if you've used enough meth or enough cocaine you may continue hearing voices and having paranoid hallucinations, stuff like that. And so um, it can be a little bit more of a rough start for those guys, but I don't see any less success rates. Okay. Yeah. Well, there, okay. Is, so there are some specific programs for that in, in Dallas. Specific. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I am not on crystal meth right now. No, I saw there's flying a CMA snakes meeting, last though. night. Seriously, there's a CMA meeting. Uh -huh. There's a few in Dallas. Oh, are Chris, are there really? Oh, to that. Oh. I thought that was Country Music Awards. No, CMA. There's okay. a CM, there's CMA meetings. Crystal Meth Anonymous. You know what? There's there's Drugs Anonymous. There's Marijuana Anonymous. I have to tell you that I've seen guys from those programs that are on fire with the deal. I mean, they are just literally, they they actually work in those steps, and they're talking about the steps, and, and uh, uh, they're plugged into the community. They're out helping other guys. That is very impressive to yeah. me to, to see that. I mean, uh, two of our key staff members, dr their drug of choice was methamphetamines, and they've been sober for years now. So I, I know lots of people that have long-term recovery that were meth addicts. Wow. It is possible. So um, you mentioned earlier that, that you're a little more expensive. So what is uh, how do you guys compare cost-wise, and do you take insurance and stuff like that? So, yeah, the, the counseling center takes insurance. Okay. So, you know, the, the counseling center is in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Magellan, which is nice because we can work with Blue Cross Blue Shield HMOs, which in Texas, 
um, individual PPOs are no longer offered. So if you have an individual plan, it's usually an HMO. So we've made that accessible and we're hoping to go in network with more uh, with more companies. And then the sober living house is um, is a little bit more pricey. You, I would want people to call and we could talk individually yeah, yeah, about, no, their, to, about yes. their price point. But, you know, we uh, here's what I will tell you is that we um, we keep our margins really tight. We want to make it as, uh, you know, we want to be able to pay our bills and pay our payroll and offer what we believe is necessary to do what we do well um, and, and keep our margins as tight as possible. Well, you've seen enough from me today to know that I can't afford that. Right. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Addiction is not a, a, a cheap disease, unfortunately. And to get good care, at least right now, unfortunately, um, you, you do have to have s- some resources at times. I mean, there there is great state funded um, treatment, you know, but you usually can't stay that long. Okay. So that's that is the unfortunate truth. Okay, we've just got a few minutes left, but tell me what is the very what's the toughest case that you've ever worked on? Who's the the toughest nut you had to crack? The toughest nuts are the guys that are the chronic relapsers that have been. I mean, we have worked with guys, and I've done this in other places in my career as well. Guys that have literally been to treatment, or men or women, uh, twenty twenty five times. Yeah. Wow. And they um, they know all the right things to say. They are so treatment and therapy savvy that it, it's like there's this barrier around them that is unpierceable. Yeah. And uh, and they it, they've become institutionalized. They know how to hold their breath through treatment, and it, and it's really really hard to get through to those guys. But I have seen quite a bit of success with those guys if you can keep them long enough. Otherwise I'm a big believer in long-term recovery and long-term treatment. Otherwise, they're the guys we learn what not to do from. Yeah. So, okay, 30 seconds. Anything, if, you, if there's anything we've left out that you really want to make sure you get the message across? Uh, you know, just that Chapter House, uh, we can work with unique cases. You know, I, I tell people that a lot. We can we work with guys that have special needs that maybe a traditional sober living couldn't work with, Asperger's, you know, maybe particular medical issues, um, you know, just just someone who needs a little extra help. Um, so, so that's one of our specialties and, and maybe the guys that haven't made it at other sober livings, um, can work well with us. I am very immature. And I have to tell you, they have to change the name of Asperger's. They've just got to <laughs> one day. They have I to. think they have actually, I think it's kind of, it's more, it's, it's out now. It's okay. supposed to be like an autism spectrum uh, okay, disorder. Okay. So right, I'm probably, Gary, how do they get a hold of y'all? 888-448-9696. One more time. 888-448-9696. And chapterhouserecovery.com. Yep. Chapterhouserecovery.com. Thank you guys for being on. We're out of time this week. You guys tune in next week. Becky Vance from Drug Prevention Resources is going to be She's on the best. Yay, yes, she Becky. is the best. She's Becky. Gary, you're welcome to come back and co-host if you want. And hopefully we'll be hearing more from you, Heidi. And you guys have an Thanks awesome week. Thanks for having week. us. Mosquitosteve.com. Steve at mosquitosteve.com. Love you guys. Thanks. Thank you.